Good Saturday evening, everybody out there in Facebook world. Joe coming to you live here from Cobbs Creek, Virginia. Man, what a long, long day it has been these last couple of days, hustling and grinding, getting things done. But today, it was more important days to come to celebrate because we're always pushing and pushing and pushing. But today, I sat back and I celebrated four years of doing the work. What's up, Ruben? See you logging in there, brother. Good to see you, Chris. Good to see you, Dave. Good to see you, Darren. We've been going uh, 100 miles an hour, but this morning I woke up and I remembered four years ago today, I started doing the work, deeply doing the work. I talked about this before, and 10 years ago I started doing the work, but four years ago I doubled down, and in four years I missed one day of not doing the work through the next level experience. So thank you, Raul Velasquez, first and foremost, when you watch this, brother. Thank you for all you do for making an impact in these businessmen's lives, these high-level entrepreneurs' lives. These guys operate a whole different level, a whole different frequency, and nobody understands these guys. So ultimately, we come together as a band of brothers to form this bond. Big shout out to Raleigh, Alex, and Joe Jelani. You guys, we went through this boot camp with me. So I was sitting here this morning. I got my journal in front of me. I was reading through my journal. I doubled down in my meditation this morning. I did 40 minutes of gratitude, 20 minutes of going deep into the rest of the, of the, the meditation that we do. So Raul, first and foremost, thank you for this process. Thank you for the system of creating this, this vehicle for us to let go, to release to be our authentic and true selves. And I can see I'm looking at myself in the eyes here. One of the things I read this morning was, as I was going through this boot camp in April of 2016, so I joined the program in February 8th of 2016. And a couple months later in April, I was on, in, and there in the, in the mission. I came, I was coming with a purpose. You guys know I was a military guy, so I was warming up. I was getting my body back in shape. Back then, I know, Eric, you know about this. I had pain in my knee, Sri. I had pain in my elbow. And I was making all these excuses in my head why I can't work out, why I couldn't do this. But I kept pushing and pushing and pushing and eating right every day. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. A green smoothie here. Getting rid of some of the alcohol. Getting rid of the white flour. Getting rid of the, the, the white rice. Getting rid of the sugar. And slowly but surely, my body started to respond until eventually... No more pain in my elbow. No more pain in my knee. Because I kept doing the work and doing the work and pushing past the limiting beliefs of my mind to tap into my soul and purpose. So I want to come to you guys today talking about this four-year journey. How I kept pushing through and breaking the belief system, letting go of pain. 38 years I carried pain around until it became me. 20 years, I was just reading here, I'll read this to you in a minute, 20 years of coasting through life, knowing I could have done more. Hello, Maria. Thank you, Sri. I could have done more, I could have achieved more, but I was just playing small because nobody understood where I was. I was all alone in this big world of life. And I'm going to get a little vulnerable with you guys today. That's where I was. So what did I do? I just blended in. I just fit in, hung out, sedated 20 years of my life going by playing video games for like 10 years where I could have been out there increasing my capacity, getting a little bit better than I was yesterday as I speak to you guys here for the last couple of years. As you can see, the edge thing behind me logo there, I got my next level jersey on this morning. I put my gear on. I got my edge bracelet here, as you guys, guys can see here. I know Ruben's got one of these. I got an award here that was, was given to me. I'll share this with you. This award was given to me two years ago. And it says, presented to Joe Shermer, the general, for being the catalyst to rise as one. So Raul saw that vision in me. As I spoke about my vision, my vision was to build the own town. We were going to call it Shermerville. And a lot of you guys that play on my softball teams know about this. It was going to be like, we're going to have half the money go to a nonprofit. Half the money is going to go to the house so we can stay in business, sports complex, playing all these games, all the things that we love to do because life is meant to be enjoyed. And I remember looking into the camera back in April of 2016, saying, this is going to happen. 
I didn't understand it was going to be senior veteran homes mixed in with that. I also wrote in my journal back then about Cappy's Canines and the Senior Dog Sanctuary. So it shows you we have to trust in the timing. It's not going to happen overnight. We have to do this thing one day at a time, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, because the mind, if you try and do too much at one time, the mind's going to pull you back and make you stay comfortable. And that's the secret. So we're going to be having a next level event on March 12th and 13th down in Hilton and Stanford. I invite some of you guys that are into business, some of you guys that are entrepreneurs, some of you guys that are looking to take your life to the next level, to rise up to that next level. I'm going to be posting a link below. Click on the link. You watch the videos. You'll see me in some of those videos. But they called me the general because I kept showing up. I kept leading. Was it comfortable? No. Was it easy? No. The boot camp back then was five days. Now it's three and a half days. Five days of pushing and pushing and pushing from early in the morning to late at night to break through. I remember I wrote down here, what did I want? So here's the journal that we hand out. This is our roadmap. And I wrote on here, it's my first journal. I have many of these journals with a lot of notes in them. But the very first thing I remember writing down here was, what do I want? And talked about building that town to help people. The very first thing I wrote was, I want to help people. That's me at the core. It doesn't have to be you, but that's me at my core. I talked about Cappy's Canines in here, a rescue shelter, a life college. One of my visions I had back, I was going down to Ace Alternative in Danbury, Mike, and I was going to build a Danbury CAP program. So where we grew up was called Danbury, Connecticut, Danbury Community Assistance Program. So these visions have always been in me. And then I sedated for 20 years and never made them a reality. But now it's ready to make it a reality. We are doubling down in real estate this year. We're going to be opening up multiple senior veteran homes across this country. I'm going to teach people how to do this. So I went into it a little bit deeper. So one of the things that we went through, it said... Um, had to go through these processes. He said, after day three experience, I had an awakening. For the first time in my life, I was able to look myself in the eyes without looking away. So I challenge you guys watching this video, go look in the mirror, look yourself in the eyes and see if you do that, if you can do that. I couldn't do it until I let go of that story, let go of that pain that I was carrying around and unconsciously I was carrying that around. So four years of doing the work, it felt like four decades. We talk about compounding time because we're so present in the moment. Being present with your wife, being present with your kids, they can feel that. Creating that level of awareness, raising your level of a consciousness, raising your vibration, all those things accumulate into compounding time. Another experience here, it says, I'm feeling the pain of 20 years of coasting through life. How many of us are, are playing small, playing down, knowing that we can do more? But then we start just being comfortable, just sitting on a couch, watching TV. And for me, it was playing video games, just passing time by. I look back down that, I was like trying to blame myself. I was like, what could you have done if you weren't sitting on that couch all those years? But the reality was, and it was just part of my experience. Another thing I wrote down here says, Joe was a unique individual who loved assisting others so he could mask the pain of his childhood. A lot of you guys don't even know that. 12 years old, my mom walked out. She was in so much pain. And I was, for 38 years, I blamed her for walking out on me. But it wasn't about me. How much pain was she in to walk out on her kids? Some of her family disowned her. Her children were angry at her. What was she going through? And I had that awakening with Dave Pena down in Texas about nine months ago. During this meditation, I, I thought about that. Says I never once thought about my mother. She's a loving woman. But I made it about me. How many times do we do that, blaming about us? I went back after that event and I said to mom, I said, mom, I'm, I'm sorry. 
I made it about me all these years. I was angry at you. I apologize. And we had a deep conversation. I continue to write, says, Joe lived 38 years in pain that he carried unnecessarily from the separation of his mother. So I made that anger and resentment and abandonment issues about me and I carried around with anger, anger at my mother. But again, not once did I ask her, why did she leave? I could have put a whole end to that years ago. But there's no manual in life that tells us this. We have to experience it. And that's why it's called the next level experience. It helps you break through the story that you used to tell yourself, Jared, Jeff, to who you can become if you let go of that story and write yourself a new story. Be the director of your life going forward. I wrote down here, it says, Joe's greatest accomplishment in life was letting go of that pain, falling deeply in love unconditionally with his wife, Kathy. And for those of you who don't know, Kathy and I met in a bar, and she doesn't even drink. Tell me that's not divine connection. Met her in Down the Hatch in Brookfield. I was in so much pain from a divorce about a year earlier that, I was like, I don't ever want to get married again. I was with five single guys, a couple of them were divorced. And there's these three beautiful women and sitting at a table. I said to the guys, hey man, go over there, talk to those girls. He said, no, you go talk to them. All right, so they challenged me, I love a challenge. I walk over there within five minutes, I got all three girls laughing. Kathy was one of them. And I asked her for her phone number. I remember sister Nancy saying, he's not gonna call you, and the next day I called. And the rest is history, we've been together now 20 years. 20 years, meeting in a bar. She introduced me more and more to the spirit world, to God and to, to a relationship with the other side, allowing me to let go of my alcohol addiction. So I know in the army I was banging, you read my books, Rise as One and Spiritual Awakening, we were banging down 12, 18, sometimes 20 beers in a day, sedating the pain. How many of us are sedating something? And I finished up with, Joe would never have enjoyed this time in his life. It was not for his affiliation with the Next Level Experience CEO and founder Raul Velasquez and his team. So thank you, Team Next Level. Thank you, Raul. Thank you, Vivian, for giving that man the space to teach these high-level crazy entrepreneurs how to let go of their story. It's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. You think it's easy for me to get on here every day? When the voice told me back in December, I said, Joe, you're going to make all these videos all year long to help other men, other women, other kids break through. But we've come to end the suffering. There are way too many people suffering in the world right now. I see the veterans, I see the seniors, I see the kids, friends of mine's kids that have died from overdoses. I couldn't imagine burying my kid. Do you think I'm gonna sit back in my bed or on my couch and watch life pass by while these people, our veterans, 22 a day killing themselves? We got another thing coming. I am coming with purpose. I'm gonna lead with purpose of a giving heart. Not looking to take, looking to give. I've been saying for a long time, if this helps one person, it's worth it. So for you leaders out there listening to this message, if you would like to join us March 12th and 13th in Stanford, Connecticut, I will post a link below. You will see me speak from the stage, pouring my heart into these men. For your brothers watching this, you know what I come to give. I am not looking for anything in return. Except for you to wake up. So your wife and your kids and your family, and your employees 
and everybody is counting on you to lead in your communities across this great land and some overseas. I come to lead with purpose, the purpose of giving, giving value, adding to your life, Robert Aguilar, adding to others' lives. Because you know what? Every time you give something to somebody else, you're going to receive anyway. And that is the blessing. So today is my fourth year, four year anniversary of the Next Level Experience. I am honored to continue to roll with these men. These are some of the guys I want in my foxhole when this shit's going to hit the fan soon. You can count on me. I will show up. And I know many of you will. It's not a, a, a nice thing to have. It's a must have. This is what we must do. Because if my nieces and nephews and your kids are going to be out there growing up in this world, we don't need any more success stories. We need more leaders that lead with purpose and heart and empathy and compassion not looking to take from their fellow men and women, but to give, give value, give wisdom, give insights. So your outer world will be a reflection of your inner world. There's no more hiding. Because when we hide, we sedate. And eventually it's a slow, steady death, burying that pain in our bodies because a body not at ease will become diseased. So I'm excited to meet these guys on March 12th and 13th. I'm excited to see you there. Where I'll celebrate these wins today. As many of us don't celebrate enough what they will say. But the reality is you got one life to live. Are you going to live it? Or are you going to sedate it? The choice is ours. So keep showing up day 39 of 366 when it's all said and done. Together, we will rise as one. I don't appreciate every one of you for showing up. It's ready to go down in 2020. Our time is now. Love you guys.